do it do a beat yo that's anna and i am ben i like my chains like i am rem that rhyme scheme sucked and the floated too let's restart natsuki subaru Why are we the way that we are? Hi, I'm Anna. And I'm Ben. We are autosave. Welcome to our channel. Today we are watching ReZero, season one, episode seven. Last episode, we uh, we found out who killed us the prior night. It hurt. It hurt. Even though we knew. Yeah. It still hurt because Subaru didn't know. Now, we're in an interesting situation because we aren't dead yet. No, and we're not. And that's kind of scarier to me than if we were it's a bigger cliffhanger than how we ended the episode before with us dying yeah like at least if we were dead we'd be like okay clean clean plate clean mm -hmm. platter hopefully we can move forward with uh best intentions and try to figure Good out a great outcome you know how have, have a couples therapy session uh we won't die here in the woods yeah outside of the mansion but now that we're still alive we risk like going forward in the story without getting all the pros of previous lives like what if we just mm -hmm. went forward here and, ne and now yeah, we're it's like you forgot against to, it's like you forgot to open a chest in a video game and you already left the dungeon you're like shit yeah i don't know I'm loving it though. I know it's uh, it was the third first day last episode, and Subaru was like, "Okay, on the fourth night, there's an attack. Is it always gonna be that way? Who even knows after this point?" Yeah, we also know that even if Subaru gets incredibly uh, harmed here but doesn't die, we don't have to worry too much because Betty can heal us. And Betty loves us. But yeah, yep. We're best friends. Best friends. Best friends. Ready? Mm -hmm. Sweet. How kind of you. Ah, uh, that's the role of the maids. Mm -hmm. So she is taking this upon herself. Okay. What do you think she was going to say? My sister, dot, dot, dot. Maybe it's because Ram was starting to like him and trust him. Mm. Maybe? Okay. All right. No, don't tur don't turn back and look. Which is called He's not allowed to tell anyone. Yo, what the fuck? There are rules? It's the same hand from the first episode. Oh! Was it a threat? Yeah. Oh, 
It's probably even why Roswell came in. It's the smell. Interesting. Smell of the witch. Wow. It's that same phrase, fanatical like a demon. What he described Rem as before. Were those Betty's the hands? I've been telling him to stay in this room all along. <laughs> I would. The fear. Why was Betty summoned? Oh, 
<笑>何なのかしら。知的てくれたんだ。俺は。お前の身の安全を守るのはベッド。わさまでって話だった。ただ。期限の話をした覚えはないのに。その何をお前は知ってるのかしら。どちらが欠けてももう元に。結局俺
that he wasn't able to tell people about it, like, to the degree that it was, to the severity that it was, was, like, the, like, I can't describe the emotion, like, the most angry, sad thing that I've ever felt, like, animosity towards whoever fucking did this. We're seven episodes in, I know, but, like, I'm, like, I was livid, man. There is a a shaman. There is a person that is placing a a curse onto someone in this house. And now we know it doesn't necessarily have to be Subaru. Maybe it is for Subaru, but because Subaru was in the Forbidden Library, it latched onto Rem. There is someone who is trying to either inflict this damage on Subaru or someone in the mansion and it just so happened the last couple times to be Subaru. Or that they were trying to inflict it on Rem all along and for some way or another or some tea or another that consistently was given to Subaru instead of Rem and this was the only time that the intended target was hit. Right. I mean, uh, it's you know, my first thought was like, oh, well, Rem seems to be almost like the not asked for a uh, protector of the mansion and the people in it. Uh, so what if they're just trying to get rid of the, the people that are in the way of them getting to Amelia or something? But I'm like, oh, but Roswell obviously has magic. Betty's there. Puck's there. Ram's there. A lot of strong people. So getting Rem out of the picture wouldn't necessarily uh, make anything easier. All I'm saying is that if it felt like... like- Subaru being there at all at the mansion is the perfect in to fuck with that family if I was on the witch's side or a competitor's side. And to get away with it. Yeah, because, like, what, like, of course everybody's gonna, like, look at the person who's a stranger who's just in the mansion. So, perfect opening to do whatever miscellaneous shit you want Mm -hmm. because they're going to point their finger in a direction that isn't you. Right, and that means that you would have to be someone of high prestige that needs uh, to have distance between yourself and whatever the tragedy would be. Like a competitor of Amelia's uh, wouldn't be elected as king or picked for king or queen if they were any type of connected to the murder of one of the possible people to take the throne. Yeah. So... Hiring out people that are known assassins. There needs to be some distance between you and and that person. And here, it, he kind of is the perfect... I mean, who knows? This could have been, you know, already decided back in town when someone could have been spying or word could have gotten around from being in town with Amelia that... Subaru went back to the mansion with her and they could have been like, okay, now's my second chance. What are the odds that potentially the same person who who is putting Subaru through this was the same person who put Rem and Ram through what they're going through? Do you think that that's like at all on the table? What do you mean? Like when they use the terminology like the witch or the smells like a witch, Mm -hmm. are they talking about a specific witch or is it just that of a witch, right? Like when the lines of like the person who caused my sister so much agony, but then the idea of Betty saying like, oh no, you smell like a witch kind of thing. It gives me the impression of whoever did this to Subaru or is giving him this, you know ability yeah yeah uh, w- i would say was a witch. yeah we you got do. the witch's cult a lot um we have this whole idea of kind of adding the terms of like oni or um demon onto rem and ram you could also it you could just think of it simply as they are they are people that were viewed at as dangerous or came from a family or a type of person that was thought of as dangerous or lesser and that is why they're so focused on hierarchy and their maids and they're like really protective of each other oh gosh it makes you want to go back to the satella jealous witch why did she give that name to begin with conversation again for like the 500th time but didn't rem say something along the lines of like that 
a witch was the one who tormented her and her sister. That created the suffering. Yeah, yeah. So I just dropped the, the mouse. So sorry. But um, but if if they like, what are the odds? Like, it, it wouldn't be a coincidence if it was the same witch who did both, right? To Rem and Ram and to Subaru. It would. It'd be hard to believe it was just a coincidence that Subaru would interact and affiliate with the same characters of Rem and Ram, right? Correct. There's also um a question of why can certain characters smell it on him when it doesn't seem to be something that Amelia uh, smells or cares much about. Puck is obviously all... Puck and Betty have have decided, what from what we've seen, especially Betty now from this episode, to trust Subaru and to like Subaru and want to befriend him, even though he smells to them so strongly like the witch. Do you think that the witch's scent was more potent to Betty because Betty came to visit shortly after the hand reached over his heart? Or is it just growing stronger every single time he dies? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, obviously, there's that fucked up possibility that you could look through it in a certain lens that they're not putting Subaru through... Necess like necessary torture and they're actually just saving his life right and the idea behind giving him these extra tries for whatever end goal it is like it needs to do so and the conditions that need to be met for that is something like so isolating as you can't mention it to anyone i i'm happy now obviously since the episode's you're over, happy because of uh because of uh the fact that there's another rule i i really like uh that it feels more like a very thought out fleshed out idea of this whole concept of of rebirth and retries and restarting that there are other rules uh because we when we first started the show we started asking questions like okay well what if it's a self-inflicted death would does that does that not have the same effect? Which we Does still don't know the to answer to. We still don't know the answer to. You're very, you're so smart to bring that up right now. We don't know the answer to that. Didn't even think about the fact that we didn't know that yet. But yeah, there's tons of questions about how does this actually work? Um, if he starts, especially because we're following a character that's uh, learning about it and discovering it at the same time as us, the viewer, that there are going to be things that he is going to assume and then because of rules, he's going to learn and we're going to learn that, you know, that's not how it works. So he might think here, oh, I can jump off this cliff and restart. And we're going to see with him if he's assuming something or not. So I'm going to assume a couple things. Mm -hmm. Firstly, that Subaru, by having that hand over his heart, that if he did say anything regarding the truth, he would have been killed. Yeah, That's like an assumption I'm going to make. Yeah. Another assumption I'm going to make is if he wrote down what happened, he would find himself incapable of doing so. And if he tried, he would die. Mm -hmm. What I don't know the answer to is how nuanced it is and if it and how black and white it really is, because he has brought up so many times vague misunderstandings and implications that what has happened happened mm -hmm. and other people don't understand. Is it they're beginning to understand that that line is drawn in the sand? Can you be vague about it in the sense that you're saying something is affecting me and if I talk about it, I'm right. going it's to saying die? that it exists gonna kill you too. Like, yeah. that there is something that is keeping... Yeah, there's a difference between, hey... I restart my life after I die and I've lived through this for four days and there is something that is happening to me and I can't tell you what it is. Is there a, a rule that is that a difference? Yeah. Can you go to Betty and say something is happening to me mm -hmm. every time I try to talk about what that thing is, I am going, I, I feel as if I'm going to die what are your thoughts? Explain. Does magic come into this? Does your knowledge? Because in my mind, part of me feels like he couldn't even do that. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I'm not sure. <sighs> Question for you. Okay. He brings up at the end here 
uh, and one of his final reasonings for wanting to save both Rem and Ram is that they were both holding his hand. I yeah. am kind of, he, obviously he's assuming and under the impression as maybe we should be that they did do it out of care, but I'm like, he didn't spend this life build this life. He's currently in building a relationship with them. So what, if You're they're right. already so suspicious of him enough to kill him in all these other lives after the like fourth day or the third day, that's their the fourth duty. Night, then why would they nicely and kindly, supportively yeah. be holding his hand? Is that just him latching onto that? Like, well, they held my hand, so it must mean that they care about me. Or were they trying to kill you? Or menacingly or threatening ram come feel hand. his palms they are so gross and sweaty you know but like <laughs> you're I, right sister they are gross and sweaty <laughs> yeah or like it could it could have not even been them it could have been an actual feeling of oh he's important to amelia it could have been i don't know i like i, I get i get your question mark there yeah. because i kind of have it as well um because obviously it, it fits with the line of thinking that we are following a character and he even says this at the end of the episode of how much he doesn't know yeah and so he obviously to even be transported into a new world you have to assume how that world works and you know and that's what he's had to do from day one is kind of assume things because he doesn't actually know and have all the information and i feel like this could just be another example of that, that he's ass assuming someone's intentions or trying to give them, like, the benefit of the doubt. Like, oh, well, why else would they have held my hand unless they cared about me? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm suspicious. Yeah. You know, the, the most heartbreaking thing, man, like, I, I, the writing's really good for it, but my mental state isn't. It's just, like, the processing of... Subaru's words and dialogue, right? Like the, like you keep leaving me behind. Like Oof. he's not stupid. We're not stupid. We we know like the feeling that he's trying to convey mm -hmm. and his understanding. That's not the reality of the situation. It's just so goddamn heart wrenching, man. This episode, um, you're uh, I'm glad that you brought up the dialogue and how he spoke to people in this episode. Um, we definitely have had him, you know, saying facts to people before that they wouldn't know, just kind of nonchalantly and then being like, huh? Uh, and so here we have him saying out loud the, these things almost as he knows he's saying them to no one, but he's just hoping someone out there will hear him or... You guys gave me you know? so many things. And it's just so realistic, I think, for if if you were transported into this situation, you would get to a point of this defeated place that he gets to in this episode that we see him do that breaking that we were wondering when yeah. it was going to happen because we were like, how could you not, you know, how could you not in this situation feel like you just wanted to give up yeah. and just like lay in the bed for three days straight <laughs> and not do anything. That's what it's exactly what I would want to do. And it was so realistic um, in the scene at the beginning of this episode where um, he is face to face with Rem, where he just starts crying and it's it's not like his and his words are going to reach her or do anything, but it's this like very desperate attempt and plea with the universe and that it's all he can do in this moment is just scream and cry and and in frustration and there's something that like felt i was like yep i can i can latch on to this i am immersed with subaru's like i was so immersed oh, me with too. subaru's emotions in this episode i was like i am in this with you subaru i am in your body right now i am like understanding why you're feeling the way you do why you're yelling right now every time he said something at the end there face to face with ram where I was like, none of these words are going to reach her. He knows that none of them are going to reach her. Nothing he said there would have made an ounce of sense to her at all. And he still said it. Yeah. And I just like, you. I felt so immersed. That stuff definitely ties back to what we were talking about a second ago about like what he can and can't do in terms of communication with this. Because 
it's a golden example of him alluding and having language based on what happened, which two things off of that. One, is it like the second another character understands what he's talking about is that line? But also, if I know he's barely alluded to it in the past few episodes, like it's just like breadcrumbs, but it does give me the impression that this is not a known curse. This is not a known thing mm -hmm. that's very common or anywhere close to it that powerful characters like we have in the show right now would not use the little breadcrumbs that they have to even potentially have an outcome, mm -hmm. right? We have this, a world with magic and yeah. witches. Like, to believe that there could be a curse that, that would have this happen, they, yep. the characters in the show might be able to piece the breadcrumbs together and, and you know, figure it out. Yeah. But it doesn't see. It seems very weird and rare. Just the like thing is, they would need the time. They yep. would need the time and the uh, getting to know of Subaru and getting to trust of him. And he's only ever had a couple days with them to even attempt to build that. So, do you think that this whole thing is somebody's game, or do you think that this is somebody's like plan to do something positive? And I'm putting a negative connotation on game there. Like game know. there. Uh, at the moment, I'm leaning towards. Uh, he's a piece and a device in order to lead towards some type of prophecy or future happening. What if they just like said the wrong name? You know, what if it was like, instead of like Natsuki, it was like they Natsuki Subaru. They meant to Subra. bring back someone else. And then like the name was so specific, it only like applied to somebody out of universe and took <laughs> Subaru out of his world in here. That'd I don't be know, fun. man. How did you feel when you found out that there was a rule that he couldn't say things? Dude, I, what, I said how I was all, I was wanting to cry. I was so I, mad. I, I, I felt so much frustration of, um, at this person, whoever it is. Okay, I meant out of story in terms of writing and choosing that as a rule for these circumstances. It, good question. Um, it would have been a lot more difficult of a story to write if that rule was not imposed. Right, because how many how many episodes could we go and friendship building without being like, okay, Subaru, why aren't you going to tell them? You know? I you would think that eventually the, that conversation would be had and he'd have a bunch of friends that knew he had this ability. It could be an interesting dynamic. I but... do think so, but depending on how long the series plans on going. Okay, so imagine for we're seven episodes in, right? If this is one season, 24 episodes, and then no other seasons, I would, if I'm honest, kind of prefer that route of him being able to tell this to people. But... What I'm thinking, or the vibe that I'm getting from the show, is that it potentially would be multi-seasonal. And because of that, I think that if you tried to tie in that added complexity of being able to tell other people this the secret, right? This mm -hmm. th this thing that's happening to you, it would get so goddamn confusing to try to understand what exactly was told to each individual character in the story about what is happening to him over and over again through the resets of death. Mm -hmm. I think the entire theme of the show would be undermined by that complexity if they chose to do that. So I'm very grateful of that rule in place here. I don't... I was waiting kind of you know, for something like this to happen. I found it very hard to believe that he would eventually just kind of be talking to people openly about this. Mm -hmm. um, the rule seems uh, to be something that's easily accessible for, for the circumstance that he's under, but it also aids and helps build uh, the frustration that we are supposed to be feeling uh, to aid our immersion yep. with and our connection with Subaru's character. This frustration of not being able to, I don't know if anyone's ever felt that feeling before when you have such anxiety or anger, or just really strong emotions where it almost feels like the words are bubbling in your chest and they can't actually come out. It's this feeling that's building here and, and with Subaru's character, which is one of the reasons I said it felt so good for him to just be kind of screaming and yelling to, to no one that could actually understand him. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that this, this rule that he can't speak on it uh, helps the isolation, helps the frustration, helps the beat down, knock you to the ground, make you want to give up that we get in this episode. And then also kind of 
in terms of like building his character to show us and to show him that like what do you what do you want yeah. who do you want to be and what do you want who do you care about yeah. it like helps make those feelings of care and wanting to save rem and ram at the end here that much more powerful and yeah I, I agree with you. I, I think that in terms of writing, that like, that's it. I In terms of, like, if I was embodying Natsuki Subaru, I think I would end up trying to develop some sort of short, short-term, mem- short-term memory loss. Because without that, I don't know. I, I don't know what I'd do. I think I'd have to do it out of coping. Because trying to continuously live and being morally in a good leaning territory Uh the lack of ability of being able to tell people about this would lead me down a path of trying to not utilize any of my previous knowledge because it i would be torturous Mm -hmm. if you were if you were like a villain you could imagine all the fucked up possibilities right so he's so much of um a good good kind of good character good person character uh by the fact that he finds it so hard to to lie that we've already seen him just so openly say truths of the past lives to people and and openly kind of be like oh yeah i knew that about you or say things that they've never told him uh his reaction to them all kind of cornering him of like subaru do you know anything about this it's written all over his face that he knows something that 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 he there's something he can't tell them. Yeah. No wonder they're all going to be like, dude, just tell us that you are ob- because he's obvious about it because he's not a liar. Yeah, I uh, have two other things I want to talk about. And that's the power system in the show. It is so interesting to me that we got something that I assumed we wouldn't get for a long time. And that is seemingly like full powered characters of, of characters like Betty or um what's the magic hisoka guy's name oh, um, roswell? roswell yeah like roswell we're seeing them power up and like their aura and stuff and i was like holy shit what would an actual fight between those two look like what would an actual fight between hisoka and roswell be like i don't know i don't know maybe they'd be best friends maybe but, they're um, long lost brothers i i am so glad we got a little bit of that and i cannot wait to get more into that but my other thing is that betty's feelings towards Subaru at the moment and how much of it is and isn't intuition because her what I believe is an intentional lack of wordage so that there was no time limit on the contract is huge mm-hmm. right like that like that speaks wonders I love her. That's crazy. Like, because why would you do that? Club. Why would you do that to somebody that you just met unless you had an inherent feeling that they were not bad, right? Mm-hmm. At least at the bare minimum. Right. That's so and, interesting. And, uh, to the point where Betty, obviously, Betty would know that, um, Betty, I believe, would know that people would probably be suspicious of Subaru. She yeah. even kind of said that to him, like, you smell a lot like the witch and, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, sh- she knows that people would be suspicious, especially in this house of Subaru, and yet still decides, because of some sense she has about him, to offer up, like, he asks her, but she makes it an official contract. She's like, okay, it's a contract. And to the point where she stands up yep. t- t- in front of Roswell being like, mm, nope, if you're going to attack him, I'm going to attack you. And I'm like, you have a contract with Roswell. Like, mm-hmm. there's this, oh, God, I love Betty. I, like, the last thing I want to say is that, like, the crazy conspiracy Ben side of me is, like, Betty is putting the pieces together and doesn't want to say anything because then that would put, like, that would end things right Mm -hmm. that would like break that parameter of people not understanding or knowing because like that i think that like in that crazy side of my brain i'm like man like if there's one character who'd put it together at this point it's betty well we have gotten language that could help us believe that betty and puck and, and the spiritual 
beings uh, can have a sense of people, whether it's like exact mind reading or it's more just understanding if someone's a good person or getting a good feeling or vibe off of them, maybe an intuition of what they might be thinking or feeling, that my, sort of thing. My like main reasoning for that is, and I could just be totally off base here, is, but I am pretty certain that uh, Subaru was very specific with until when, right? Like just this amount of days. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is like key information, especially paired with the fact that Betty ignored it later on, mm -hmm. right? It's interesting, but that's all, that's all I have. I love Betty. Yeah, Betty's great. Betty. Okay. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we hope to see you next time. I'm gonna go cry now.